Good morning. It's Sunday, July 25th. I'm going to talk today about clay chairs and talking dogs. Um, I don't know the exact wording of it, but there, there used to be a long time ago some sort of joke about a talking dog and the gist of it was that the dog didn't speak very well, didn't have much of a vocabulary, didn't have a very good uh, enunciation and so forth, but that the gimmick of a dog that could talk at all was somehow noteworthy and so that the audience could, you know, <clears throat> cut him some slack for the deficiencies. And ever since I've started making clay armchairs, I've just felt vulnerable to that sort of a criticism, both from myself and from, you know, audiences. It's kind of a novelty that I could make life-size, comfortable clay armchairs. But are they good chairs? Or are they good art? And, I mean, to what extent do they have value other than the novelty of being made out of clay? Now, the clay, I, I should say, has a, has a mechanical value too. So they're passive solar. So one couple that owns a chair in Rhode Island, they have it in their sunroom in the winter and it, and it warms up as the sun comes through the, the, the windows and the chair is in that regard extra comfortable because it is, it is solar heated. And apparently there's some competition about who's gonna to get to sit in it while they read the paper. So there's a, there's a mechanical reason why the chair is better on that level. Um, they're also designed to be kept outdoors if you want. And there's a couple here in Lawrence that have had one out in their yard for 20 years. They, they weather spectacularly well. And most yard furniture is practically disappearing as you watch it. I mean, it, the, the weather just tears most most yard chairs to pieces, certainly here in Lawrence, Kansas. So so there's the, the durability benefit, but it still gets back to, you know, is it a good chair? Is it a good art? And it isn't always. I mean, that's one of the challenges when I make them, is that, you know, some of them are, you know, comfortable for a few minutes or half an hour or an hour. It's a little like an oak chair. Um, so I'm trying to make them better and better. I'm trying to make them so good that the fact that they're made out of clay and that there's some novelty to that is like the fifth or sixth thing that comes up. That's, that's where I'm, I'm going for. And frankly, no one in the ceramics world really cares. I mean, former professors are sort of curious that I'm still making them. Uh, one of them got featured in a book uh, section uh, on hand-built ceramics, one of the books by Lark. But really, they haven't made much of a splash, and some of that may be because they're not good enough yet. I also haven't pushed it, so. But today, I have some clay that I just bought from Wreckers this week and I'm going to try to do better than I did last time. Uh, this one will be uh, aimed for wood firing so the decorating will be sort of minimal. Uh, I suppose I should clarify that. One of the things I do when I'm decorating something for wood, wood firing is I don't, I don't want to leave it completely plain. I don't want to just trust to the fire to, to do wonderful things. I, I, I want to indicate that there was a human intelligence that cared about how it looked. But I also have to, at the same time, be clear that the process of wood firing is likely to obliterate at least part of what I've done. So I'm not tempted to do anything elaborate or detailed like I did with the Minoan chair. Uh, I tend to do things that are 
much more open, in part because I want those open spaces uh, to be uncomplicated or to be available for decorating by the process. I don't want the whole thing that way, but I want enough of it that way. So, so here we go. The latest chair starting today. Have a good day.